Sutra, Choice, Law, Freedom. Reasonable egoism is justified. We fight for our happiness and freedom of choice, otherwise, why were we born? The need for freedom of information, communication, and movement is one of the most important for humans. Why are these freedoms so necessary? According to psychologists, they are crucial values because they play a key role in human development, in forming one's identity, and in determining the extent of one's participation in public life. Freedom of information, communication, and movement allows individuals to learn, analyze, draw conclusions, develop, make complex decisions, and influence their surrounding reality. Often, people tie their freedom to the control they have over their surroundings. Most people believe they would prefer to be leaders with control over subordinates rather than being controlled by someone else. Psychologists suggest that control can indeed be beneficial, but it can focus on different aspects. Research has shown that people with an internal locus of control, those who believe they manage their actions and achievements, have better physical and mental health compared to those with an external locus, those who believe their lives are determined solely by external circumstances. Nothing is as free as the human thought. David Hume A truly free person, according to writer Miguel Ruiz, has immunity to various attempts by others to regulate their behavior. He advises, don't take anything personally. We can always view others' attempts to control us as reflecting on them, not on us. A truly free person does not try to control others. Psychologist Michelle Lariviere, in her book Conquering the Freedom to Be Yourself, shares a similar view. Freedom is internal independence. It is a state that allows a person to be themselves, to feel comfortable in their own body, whether alone or with others. A free person easily endures criticism and does not seek to criticize others. They are not afraid of appearing silly and doing what they enjoy. One could say that a free person is driven by reasonable egoism a behavioral strategy where a person makes active efforts toward self-development and achieving their goals without infringing on the interests of others or conflicting with society. It might seem strange, but morality and egoism often go hand in hand. They have much in common. When we think of morality, we immediately picture people doing the right thing, making the world better, and thinking of others. However, if we analyze why people make highly moral decisions, it becomes clear that they often also consider their personal interest. Almost always, when solving ethical issues, the mechanism of egoism is at play. And this is not surprising. Truth, freedom, and virtue are the only things worth loving life for. Voltaire I do not share your beliefs, but I would die to defend your right to express them. Voltaire It's good for a bird in a golden cage, but even better on a green branch. Egoism drives much of our behavior, even acts of generosity. Experts suggest that healthy egoism egoism that directs people in a positive direction is beneficial. If a person wants to behave morally and perform good deeds for others, including for personal interests, there is nothing wrong with that. Self-care is also justified. Physical and mental health is significant not only for oneself but also for loved ones. If we do not care for ourselves, it inevitably affects our relatives and close ones. Just as any illness or discomfort of our loved ones cannot leave us indifferent. We must remember that our well-being is as important to those around us as it is to ourselves. In the strictest sense, only egoism can be considered reasonable. This is not just a position of the famous Russian revolutionary writer-materialist Nikolai Chernyshevsky but rather a long-established principle of Hellenistic philosophy, which guided people to care for themselves. 
A lecture course dedicated to this aspect of late Greek philosophy formed the basis of the famous French philosopher Michel Foucault's book The Hermeneutics of the Subject. Such care for oneself, a classic rather than a reasonable egoism, turns out to be quite humane towards others. Thus, Seneca, Epicurus, and other Hellenistic authors demonstrated that it is reasonable to care not only for one's own health and well-being but also for the health and general welfare of loved ones, one's state, and one's homeland. They believed that concern for one's own freedom could serve as a reliable basis for continuous care for others, their freedom, and well-being. Indeed, what freedom and peace can one speak of if one's parents or children are ill, if a friend is in trouble? or if a country is on the brink of war or revolution. I am free to enter the other five rooms of my house, but I do not enter because I do not need to. I am content with the one in which we are now talking, but it is very important to me to know that I can enter any of the other rooms at any time. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe To live freely, to die in the field Freedom is more valuable to a bird than a golden cage. O oh freedom, the charm of my life, without you work is torture, and life is a long death. Freedom is the deity of my soul. Pierre Proudhon By prioritizing self-care and ensuring everything necessary for inner growth and development, we gain true freedom. The essence of feeling free lies in the freedom of choice the ability to consciously choose between alternative courses of action with full awareness that we could have chosen differently. Freedom of choice is closely related to the concept of will, which, according to intellectualist theory, can be reduced to the functioning of cognitive processes. The desire to understand the world, both external and internal, is a deeply ingrained need that defines a person's identity, providing a sense of internal completeness, giving life meaning, and imparting a sense of freedom. The world-renowned scientist V.I. Vernadska said, For me, life is defined by love for people and the free quest for truth. These words describe the extremely important aspects of normal human life which involve free communication with people, movement, and self-knowledge. By constantly feeding oneself with knowledge, skills, and certain abilities, a person becomes truly free. However, freedom is not a simple gift of fate. The freedom of choice granted to us entails responsibility for the actions and decisions accompanying this choice. Living in society, especially in a traditional society, and being free from its demands and constraints is, if possible, very challenging. That's why the greatest minds of all times and many nations seek harmony between the personal and the social, creating philosophical and religious ethical teachings and demonstrating the possibility of preserving inner freedom through their way of life. Freedom is not idleness but the ability to freely manage one's time and choose one's occupation. Jean de la Bruyere Man is educated for freedom. George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel For example, the Russian and Ukrainian wandering philosopher, poet, fable writer, and educator, the founder of Russian religious philosophy Grigory Savik Skovoroda remained true to the path of freedom he had chosen for his entire life. Coming from a low-landed Cossack family, he could have pursued a brilliant secular or spiritual career. But his thirst for knowledge, new experiences, freedom, and wandering led him to the Russian diplomatic mission in Tokay. Skovoroda wandered through Europe for five years, eagerly absorbing new knowledge, attending lectures by the most famous professors, learning new languages, keeping notes and correspondence in Latin, and later in ancient Greek. The spirit of freedom, an irresistible urge for it, kept Skovoroda from taking steps that would tie him to one place or impose a duty or official obligations on his life. Free in his movements, he visited new places, met new people, learned and taught, wrote and created. The world tried to catch me, he wrote as an epitaph for his grave, 
but did not catch me. And Grigory Skovoroda died precisely when he wished, ardently protecting his inner freedom until the end. Freedom despises even death, as in the case of the suicide of the Dacian king Dispolis, who did not want to fall into Roman captivity, or the death of the defenders of the last Jewish fortress of Masada, who preferred it to a torturous and shameful slavery. Today, freedom is a well-developed, thoroughly structured concept, even legally. Much of this is due to the influence of the Anglo-Saxons, who elevated this category to the rank of a major value. No one can be forced to be rich or healthy against their will, formulated John Locke, laying the foundation for all future economic miracles. Human rights are, above all, the rights of the individual who has recognized and fought for them. Certainly. Here's the translation of your text into English. Dash. Grigory Pomerantz. The white light is given freedom. To the free man, freedom is given, to the saved, paradise. But limitations, prohibitions, and taboos still exist in society, and if we refer to physical terms, they can be represented as potential barriers that accompany a person throughout their life. Often, a person forgets that these obstacles' potential barriers are not absolute. There is always an opportunity to overcome them. To overcome a potential barrier, one needs to have a certain potential that must exceed the height of the barrier. In this case, potential refers to personal qualities and character, and the sense of freedom arises from understanding one's own possibilities. For a person with a strong character, obstacles are not an absence of opportunities but the emergence of new options. For instance, Christ, in the Gospel, breaks and destroys the barriers that existed among his people and the religion of ancient Israel. Numerous examples confirm his thesis. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, John 8:32, free from sin, stereotypes, ethnic closed-mindedness, thereby naturally providing us an example of how to act in our lives and specific circumstances. For example, in response to the lawyer's question who is my neighbor, Christ tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, Luke 10, 29, 37, placing at the center of his narrative a representative of a people whom his compatriots despised. Christ breaks the ethnic and religious closed-mindedness, and the preaching of the new faith becomes free from any boundaries. Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 8:11. Everyone has the right to approach and communicate with God, Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Matthew 19:14. Rational thought and spiritual freedom are the calling of man. Konstantin Aksakov Most people in reality do not want freedom, because it implies responsibility, and most people are frightened by responsibility. Sigmund Freud A bird can be caught. But can one make the cage more pleasant to it than the free air? God hold lessing. The grounds and nature of freedom were also discussed by Abba Anthony the Great, 4th century God, being good and not envious, generous, gave man freedom in relation to good and evil, endowing him with reason so that, by contemplating the world and what is in it, he might know the creator of all things for man. But an unrighteous man may desire and not understand this, may, to his misfortune, disbelieve and think contrary to the truth. Such is the freedom of man in relation to good and evil. Christianity posits that free contemplation leads to knowledge, and then comes the action with bearing responsibility for one's free choice. The gift of freedom is the most important and valuable, the task is not to lose it. In Islam, 
freedom is understood as a natural right of a person related to their ability to do or not do something, guided by their own choice, Ikiyar. Freedom of choice was endowed by the Almighty, so no one has the right to dictate how a person should act or what they should do. The only limitation for a person in their actions is the Islamic law, Sharia, which defines the boundaries of a Muslim's freedom. Violating the norms established by Sharia is considered a sin. A truly free person is not the property of another person, the state, or society. A Muslim is free in their movements, choice of residence, religion, work, beliefs, and communication. For example, the Quran states that the Prophet Muhammad could not force others to believe in Allah, it was their free choice. The Prophet's mission was to deliver the revelation to the people, so remind, for you are only a reminder, Quran 88,2122, if they turn away, then we have not sent you as a guardian over them. Your duty is only to convey, Quran 42,48. But a Muslim feels true freedom only by following what Allah has ordained for him, that is, fulfilling his destiny in the world. Freedom exists only for those who strive towards something. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry In all epochs, freedom of thought is the main condition of freedom of existence. Natip Kamitov Whoever has plucked the rose of freedom will not scatter its petals. Anonymous. Freedom is conscious necessity. Spinoza. In Buddhism, spiritual freedom, vimity, arises under the influence of dispassion. In early Buddhist teachings, freedom consists of two parts. First, there is sito vimity, freedom of the mind, which signifies complete freedom from any subjective emotional and psychological bias from prejudices, and from any psychological conditioning. Second, there is prujnavimity, freedom of wisdom, which means freedom from all incorrect views, ignorance, false philosophy, and opinions. This complete freedom of heart and mind at the highest possible level is the goal and object of Buddhist life and practice. Buddha once said, just as the ocean has one taste, the taste of salt, so my teaching has one taste, the taste of freedom. The ultimate goal, the culmination of Buddhism, is this taste of complete spiritual freedom, freedom from all conditioned existence. But this freedom is still the completion of the spiritual path. Subsequently, a stage called knowledge of the destruction of Ashrava arises. It is not enough just to be free. The next stage is to realize that we are free. A person knows they are free when the ashrava has been destroyed. Ashrava is a term meaning a kind of mental poison filling the mind. There are three ashravas, kamasrava, the poison of desire or passion for experiences obtained through the five senses, bhavasrava, attachment to any form of conditioned existence, even existence as a god, and Avidya's Rava, the poison of spiritual ignorance. When these poisons are removed and a person knows they are removed, then the thirst or passionate desire, Trishna, the emotional component of spiritual ignorance, is destroyed. The chain is broken at its weakest and strongest link. Now, under the influence of sensations, no desires arise at all. At this stage, Buddhists reach the end of the spiral path and achieve the state of Buddha. The Jewish tradition calls Passover, the central Jewish holiday commemorating the exodus from Egypt, the festival of freedom. It emphasizes that the source of this freedom is not merely physical liberation but freedom is achieved only after accepting the Torah, after realizing the religious aspect of the exodus. The Torah embraces and values physical freedom freedom of the body from physical bondage, the freedom of a person or nation to govern themselves. But in addition to physical freedom, Judaism values another aspect of freedom, the freedom of the divine spark, which is the inner essence of the soul, 
destined to govern the external elements of the soul its passions, temptations, and momentary desires. Judaism holds that the essence of a person, their true inner self, is the divine spark burning within them, and the goal of a person is to realize the potential embedded in this spark. In the surrounding world, we often see how a person, chasing after immediate temptations, becomes a slave to their passions, and such a person cannot be considered spiritually free. But the ideal of Judaism is not to suppress passions, but for a person to manage their passions, to direct the energy of passions towards fulfilling the mission dictated to them by their divine spark. He who does not want to be a servant of God becomes a servant of his passions, says the Talmud. Freedom is the highest good, and its value cannot be replaced by comfort in abundance, as symbolically illustrated by the Armenian folk tale The Dog and the Wolf. Once, a peasant went into the forest to gather firewood. His dog followed him. They entered the forest together. Suddenly, a wolf appeared. He attacked the dog and wanted to eat it, but the dog, with tears in its eyes, said to him. What have I done to you that you want to eat me? If you eat me now, you will still be hungry tomorrow. Let's go to my home, where I am given bread and other food every day. We can live together. Good is freedom. The difference between good and evil lies only in freedom or in freedom itself. Srin Kierkegaard Only those who fight for it every day are worthy of life and freedom. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe The wolf sees that the dog is speaking the truth and agrees. They walked on, and when they approached the village, the wolf noticed that the dog's neck was bald, covered with festering wounds. It is good, very good, brother, that you live so well, but why is your neck like that? You see, brother, my master has a bad character. Before he puts the bread before me, he puts a chain on my neck, and then says, Eat. No, brother, I will go back, and you go and live with a full stomach and a chain on your neck. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 8:32. Goethe once said that freedom is the most amazing thing, I am free to enter the other five rooms of my house but I don't go in because I don't need to right now. I am content with the one room we are in, but it is very important to me to know that I have the freedom to enter the other rooms at any time. For the modern person, freedom means not only the freedom to access information and the ability to influence at least the events that directly concern oneself but also the possibility to move in social and geographic spaces to where one can be most in demand and where one feels successful and happy. The most important thing is to understand that there is no single right choice, just as there are no universal recipes for life and social success. Everyone must think for themselves and have the courage to use their own reason as Immanuel Kant wrote, Sapara Ode, Dare to Know.